Beanie Siegel says that the fight between Rockefeller and the Locks in the early 2000s started because of what Jay-Z said on the remix of R. Kelly's song Fiesta. In the most recent episode of his interview with VLAD TV, Beans talked about the history of the fight between Rockefeller and the Locks. With all of the lyrical jabs and disses that were thrown back and forth, the beef between the two groups became one of the most remembered of the time. Many people have thought for a long time that there is no clear answer to the question of what caused the fight between the two groups. Beanie Siegel, on the other hand, has talked about what happened between the two groups and why things went wrong from his point of view. One of the co-founders of State Property said that the Locks made subtle digs at the members of the Rockefeller Band in the lyrics of many of their songs. On the original version of R. Kelly's Fiesta, which Hove was featured on, Jada Kiss was a guest. However, it seemed like everything started when Hove was featured on the remix of the song. The Locks thought that Jay was trying to take down Jada Kiss in the background with his rap on the track, and before long, war broke out. That song was made by the band Kiss. This is what Bean said about the first version of the Fiesta song. He was featured on that R. Kelly record. He did not shoot his gun at me, Jay shot at them with his gun. After the party, it's the hotel lobby and this is probably what comes after the first version. That Fiesta joint, Kiss and them were the first ones to play on that spot. He went on to say, It was a shot because at first they were a couple of joints. Jay jumped on joints and then you hear little things. Because it was a shot, it was a shot. We all know that Big is the most skilled of us. But he wasn't there to show it. Math Hoffa and Styles P talked about how the beef started when Styles P went on his show, My Expert Opinion. Styles P told Math Hoffa about a similar situation with Hove jumping on songs that Kiss and the Locks had already made. Styles said, Beans was just like us, but he was from Philadelphia. Since you already know what Hove, Dame, and the others were up to, I'll just say that for me, this was more personal. Since Kiss and Hove kept showing up on the same remixes, finally something happened. To put it simply, I got the feeling that they were aiming for Kiss. Kiss is our Derek Jeter. If you bother one of us, you bother us all. This is how things are from where I'm from." In an interview with DJ Who Kid in 2017, Sheik Louch said something that was close to this. He said, Beans and them were saying some stuff in their lyrics because they were smooth-talking. Beans and them were lyrically saying some S. Those Philly guys say some questionable things. So at that point I would be like, oh crap, Styles got the guns. Where do those guys keep their records, you ask? as if it happened exactly like that. During his talk with VLAD TV, state property member Freeway also brought up the fight and said something similar about how indirect shots were being taken. Freeway says that the fight started when Jada Kiss and Beanie said some light disses about each other. This led to a member of the Locks putting out the trash track. Unhung. When we heard that, we knew that's what it was, Freeway said when asked about the event. When Beans and Kiss took control of the situation and started making diss tracks against each other, the beef hit its peak. Members of both teams were armed and made repeated threats, which made it very unlikely that things would get violent. Beanie Siegel and Jada Kiss were able to end their fight in a meeting in New York City's Riverside Park in August 2001. This was possible because they both thought more clearly. Before Beanie put out a diss track about Jay in 2009, he and Jay had a fight around the time of the famous Rockefeller split and Siegel's continued legal problems. The hate track by Beanie was about Jay. In a new episode of Drink Champs, Siegel talked about he felt when Jay spoke up for him in court in 2003, when he was charged with attempted murder and a federal weapons charge. Jay, on the other hand, said that it wasn't his job to keep Siegel out of trouble in the future. Siegel was able to say, I have never felt that crushed in my whole life. That upset me a lot. That took away a lot of the crappiness I thought we had. Wow, dude, that's a big deal right there. He's glad that they've been able to work out their differences since then, and when he looks back, he doesn't blame Jay for what he did. I think Jay thought at that time that I was hard to predict, he said. I didn't know that made him think that. I was bugging. I know I didn't have any money. I couldn't be held in check. In 2015, when they saw each other again at a live concert put on by Tidal, Siegel said that he wished they had talked about that time in their friendship. He said that they wished they had talked about it. We have never talked about that, he said with conviction. I was hoping that he would answer. The same as, where were you? Many things were putting pressure on me. That really made me feel bad. 
you have to talk to the other person in some way. During another part of their talk, the rapper who grew up in Philly told Jay the story of how a dogfight almost caused him to miss an important first meeting with Jay. In the late 1990s, Siegel said that his friend Bubonic of Philly's Most Wanted asked him to go with him to a meeting of the Rockefeller record label after they had a friendly rap fight. Philly's Most Wanted had a member named Bubonic. He said, even at this point, I don't take rap as seriously as I should. I wasn't trying to be a rapper, I was just doing what I knew I could do. He's given me contracts. I mean, they all had contracts. Yeah, they can't have contracts with all of the labels that want to sign them. There are like four of them. Then he said, hey, we were supposed to go up there to Rockefeller Records to meet Jay-Z. When he suggested that I bring you with us on his ride, I said, all right, sure, I'll take the ride. On the day of the meeting, he was betting on a dogfight, though. I ain't trying to go there, he said. That's not where I want to go. I'll do my best to get to this cockfight. I'm going to bet, and I'm sure I'll win. To keep things short, I tried to get away from him by ducking. I'm trying to get out of the rocking chair. They did nothing but wait and sit downstairs. I'm like, oh, they're outside the crib, so I guess I have to go with them. Soon after that, Siegel met Jay-Z and Too Short, who were making records at the time, and they gave him a record deal. It didn't take long after the first meeting for this to happen. Looking back on it, Beans understands why Jay would refuse to be held accountable for Beanie's actions, saying, I guess Jay thought I was unpredictable at the time. I was bugging. I know I didn't have any money. I couldn't be held in check. How about you? Even though it doesn't seem likely that Jay and Beans will make another song together soon, even the thought of it would be cool if they did. You should never say never. What do you think about all this? Do you side with Beanie or Jay? Let us know in the comment section down below. We'd love to hear your thoughts about this. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for more interesting information. We'll see you again next time.